Welcome back to another episode of We Rogue Like It, episode five, which means we're starting a brand new game. This is the yes. first episode of Sunless Sea. Yes, it is. Uh, which uh, both Moon and I have been uh, departing from fallen London, mm -hmm. and, uh, being a, a submarine captain. And I, I, I'm not a submarine captain. I'm a I'm a Zayla captain right now. Yeah, I'm still a, a Zayla. I don't. How many How many runs do you have under your belt? I have about four. I have about six to eight runs, mm -hmm. and concurrently, I'm on captain number five on a string of five. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. Shall we talk first and foremost about the thing I sent you a message about in the middle of the week? <laughs> yes. So, I picked up this game on Steam thinking, well, I've got two options. I've got my PC or I've got my PS4. Mm -hmm. So, I thought I'd take a shot on the PC because I don't play much on my PC. So, give it a shot. Yeah. Let's just say it doesn't run great. <laughs> uh, 2018's understatement. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I was getting probably around about maybe five to six frames a second. Yeah, you said your CPU was pegged too, like. Yep, my CPU was maxed out. Everything, like, no matter what I was doing, I was put. They have three graphics settings. <laughs> yes. And the lowest was too high for my thing. Right. And I'll be honest, like I, like I went through a whole rigmarole of trying to figure out how to optimize it. I literally shut everything on my system down except for the game. Still didn't run that great. And to be clear, you have a good computer. It's not like you're running something that's 15 years old. No. I, this computer was built January of this year. Right. Not to the highest specs, mind you, but still. I'm running a Core i5. Mm-hmm. I'm running, I believe it's a 980. Right. You got a good machine. Like, it, it should be able to run Binding of Isaac and Sunless Sea. <laughs> yeah. It pretty much runs a lot of stuff. Everything I've, everything I've tried to run on this machine so far, it has crushed. Yeah. Granted, I haven't tried running The Witcher. I haven't. <laughs> right. I haven't run Crisis. Right. Yeah. Because I don't own Crisis. But for some reason, it just did not want to work. Yeah, I, I, I did some I looking around. Why? Apparently, that happens with some Unity games where it just it just doesn't like something about your Windows installer, or your PC, or something, and it's just not going to happen. Mm hmm. And that's so. Sucks. I got a refund. On nice, Steam. great. Uh, I put fourteen minutes into it, so <laughs> yeah. Well, literally, I you did the perfect thing for a refund, which is it's. It doesn't work. Like, not that I don't like it, or it stinks, or there's a lady in it. I just, I, it doesn't work on my computer. Yep. It's yeah. literally like five, five, six frames a second. Yep. The music was great. Yes. The <laughs> graphics looked amazing. Yep. I just, I was seeing them in very framey, choppy right. like settings. A PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I got my refund on Steam, and I then switched over to the PlayStation 4 and bought it there, because yeah. why not? Yeah, you got your you refund. Know? Yep. And then I started playing this game. And let's just get this out the way first and foremost, shall we? Okay. I don't know if I like this game. Oh, thank God. That's literally the first thing I have written in my notes is, <laughs> I'm not sure if I like this game or if I hate it. <laughs> but I Just for the record, the very, very top right there. <laughs> I don't know, I if, don't I like know it. if I like it. <laughs> the, the thing to me is, I... I... I, I'm leaning more towards I don't like it. So I, I have, like I said earlier, I have about four or five runs in. I've spent probably about an hour per run. Mm -hmm. um, I can't put my finger on exactly what I don't like. <laughs> For me, personally, the thing I'm struggling with the most, it's the pace. It's, yeah, it, is it is so slow. It is glacial. Considering, I mean, we are we're ta you're talking about two people here who, don't get me wrong, we just finished Hands of Fate, which is a slow game. <laughs> yes. But we are also super fans of Isaac, which, right. when it gets quick, that game is real quick. Right. But it just, so much about this just screams, do something else while you're playing it. Yeah, and like, I... I sort of respect 
that it has a deliberate pace. You know, you're going mm -hmm. to have a run. You're not going to have a run that lasts 10 minutes, but you could have a run that lasts six hours. You know, yep. that's a possibility if you're having a really great run. And I, I like that, but when you're presented with your first couple of runs, I'm glad the game at the beginning says, your first captain will die, others may succeed. Thank yep. you. Thank you. I <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. That you know, rogue like that helps so much by saying like you're gonna you're gonna die. This is your run. But I think the game feels a little bit aimless at the beginning. So I I wanted to get through the first week before I looked at any beginners guides or anything like that. The mm -hmm. tutorial. Uh, so much of this game is confusing, and the tutorial mm -hmm. is confusing. Yes, it is. Yeah. They they do not do a. <laughs> Let me just get my marketing hat on here. Mm -hmm. They do not do a very good job of onboarding new players. <laughs> uh, that is, yes, 100%. This, it, like, you load up the game, and okay, it's great. It's a, it's an amazing set, and like, let's just not, let's get this out of the way first and foremost. I love the, the lore of this game. Yeah, like, no one can go on the surface anymore, so you're in this underground sea. That's the problem, is there are people on the surface still? <laughs> right, like, yeah, I keep getting these little lore things about, like, people going to surface. I was like, wait, I want to I wanna go there I too. I know exactly what, how to get there. Oh, I know okay. exactly what to do to get there. Okay. The problem is, you need, like, 25 supplies to get there. <laughs> Goodness. Yep. So, I love the lore. I love the setting. It's fantastic. By the way, on the PlayStation 4, this thing looks like a pretty good game on the pc it looks fantastic mm -hmm. like it's a, the difference in the graphical nature of this game between the playstation 4 and pc is insane like it's yeah. one of those things where it's like the pc version is clearly mm -hmm. so much higher detail than the playstation version and the ps4 version runs great thankfully and, yep um they did a really good job i feel of putting it on a controller with 15 mm -hmm. different buttons that you're gonna need and I, it's smart how you know to pull out a bigger menu hold this button to not do it to, you know tap a button that that stuff feels smart yep i like there's so much to love about this but then it's so slow it, it's so slow well I, on top of that like there seems to be everywhere you go you'll pick a menu and i i finally feel like i'm getting an idea of the the core gameplay loop. Yeah, but I literally hit that yesterday. I was like, okay, it's midnight, and I'm just learning how to actually play this game now. Right, okay. Like, generate port reports and bring them back to London and turn them in. I was like, okay, now I have money. Oh, okay, cool. All right, that would have been useful a week ago. <laughs> yes. I, one of my one of my biggest problems is once you get past the tutorial stuff, which again is rough one of my biggest problems is you go to a port and you'll interact with something if you have like the four or five cards you need to interact with something cool then you might get six or seven cards or fragments or items or things out of it and you're just i, I feel like you're you're gathering so much stuff but i never have an appreciation of how I turn that into other stuff, or how I leverage that into going somewhere else to do something. Yep. Uh, for example, so, so here's some... I, this, I think the biggest difference between this and most other roguelikes we've played so far is there is a lot less randomization to this. Mm, yeah. Apparently, the every between deaths, the, 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 the layout of the majority of the map will change. Right. But mostly the four corners stay the same. Okay, and fall. It seems like London is always in the same spot it's in. Yeah, so like yeah. fallen London is always like pretty much dead center on the west. Yeah, there is a thing on the south. There is a thing on the north. There mm -hmm. on that side, roughly the middle will shift a little bit, but not not to a huge degree kind of thing. It right. will just change a little bit. But I was as I'm as I'm repeating the runs, I'm finding out more and more. Like I went to Vanderblight. Yes. Which is the place north of Fallen London. I went past that to somewhere else and docked there mm -hmm. and got an uh, an encounter which gave me 
uh, something to do with this serpent thing. And then on a different run entirely, I saw the hand in mission for that serpent stuff. Oh, okay. So now I know to hand in that mission at Fallen London, I need to go to that place, deal with that encounter, hopefully roll as successfully as I did roll, and then go back to Fallen London with the rewards to get the rewards. Right. There is several repeatable missions which are okay and profitable wise. Um, pro tip, I think it's the hunters. The hunters, I don't know. The hunters, something. It's literally right next to Fall on London. Yeah, it was like the three sisters. Yep. Yeah. Every time you can get the chance to go there with a new thing, then mm. that's great. The flavor text means so much that you don't learn about naturally. Oh, okay. So, I'm assuming by now you know about the bell. Uh, no. Okay, you know when you're randomly sailing through the through the through the undersea and you yes. get the bell, mm -hmm. and there's a little golden symbol on the left hand side that yeah, appears. Yeah, like where your log is. Yeah. Yeah, that is what's known as a new encounter will happen the next time you go to a port. So, oh. for example. If you have that bell and you go to Fall in London, you could get the guy with the knife who makes you an offer you can't refuse. Gotcha, okay. Or you could get the policeman who wants to search your hold. Right. Or you could get the university who wants your help re researching a bunch of other stuff. Right. That indicates when you go to a port, there is a new special encounter right. thing something for you. Something new will happen. Yes, and it doesn't matter which port you go to, something will happen at that port the next time you dock. But then you get the flavor text, like a breeze passes by, mm -hmm. uh, waves your hair, and then stops. Right. That indicates there is a new story at port, f at a port, for you to go and collect the new story or the new encounter or the new mission. Oh, so okay. there is all of the flavor text actually usually means something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I thought it was just like, you know, cool world building stuff. I was like, this is all the game is incredibly well written. Like, I, mm -hmm. I, that's that's one thing I'm enjoying consistently is is that oh, stuff is really Writing, great. the lore, everything about that. Yeah. Have you bumped into the clay men yet? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the the one encounter I I did have, I, I, I was hoping that some of my ship's deaths would be more interesting. A lot of them are... I ran out of food and fuel before I figured out the gameplay loop, and everybody ate each other and after killing each mm -hmm. other. So, that, that uh, was you, super exciting. Really quick, did you yeah. end up just sitting there waiting for your food to go down or your insanity to go up? Mm -hmm. Hit square, pull up the menu, you've got an abandoned ship option right there. Okay, perfect. Because I sat for an hour and a half waiting for my characters to go insane, oh, and yeah. then kept on succeeding the role, which lowered their insanity. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, good to know. So, if you hit square, okay, so, if you have supplies but no fuel, mm -hmm. if you hit square, there's a chance to roll supplies into fuel. Yeah, because you can, like, search for fuel stuff. Yes. Yeah. And then, obviously, you, you have the forbidden taste kind of perk right. that, you can, <laughs> that you can take at one point. But there, if, if you're completely out of options, if you open your logbook, there is literally a abandoned ship option okay. in one of those choice boxes. So that, that would have been helpful on a run I had one of the runs I had yesterday because I I went to the southern edge of the map and there mm -hmm. was just giant land masses. I went to the Did you see the big spinny thing in the bottom left corner? No. I okay. was more in the um, middle. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything then. Okay. Um so I went to the upper left hand corner and I could sail off the map and I was like well I'm, I'm oh, definitely yep. going to try this you, did, you went to the something straight is what it's called yeah it's and uh, there's a little path the avid horizon is where it sent me to um, I've been to two places up there I've yeah. been I've not been sent I sailed off the map mm -hmm. to, twice once I got sent to frostblight and the other time I got sent through the north gate Oh, wow. I've never been to avid horizon okay I, I I think Avid Horizon might be one of the names for just, like, a frozen thing up there. Because mm -hmm. um, it seems to randomize some names of some places. Um, but that was, that was a harrowing experience because I was down to not a lot of supplies or fuel when it teleported me. 
uh, I and just then it takes a bunch away from you. Well, it didn't take a bunch away from me. It took almost all of my crew. So I couldn't go to two speed. I could only go to one. Yep. That took me a half an hour to get from there to fall in London, like stopping at any port I could just to buy like one more fuel and one more supply. Um, and then I eventually, by the time I got there, I had one crew member left because every once in a while a tentacle would come out of the ocean. It oh, would because grab you, a crew member. You went insane. Yeah, and That's then. That's what that is. Well, yeah, and then it would just go away. And I was like, but no, but no, I need them. I only have four yeah. people. That's a, that's a really high um, fear effect. Oh, okay. I think it's around about 75 that sh that starts showing up. Yeah, I was at, by the time I got to fall in London, I was at 90, and I did something to bring it all the way back down to zero. The second you hit fall in London, it automatically goes down to 50. So that's good. Okay. Yeah, and I did um, some, I did some like walk around event, you know, the, some dice roll event too. And like that, yeah. the part that's frustrating for me early days in Sunless Sea is that, like we're saying, the writing is great. The lore is really interesting. The, the, the mood of it is really great. It feels, it genuinely feels dark and a little bit oppressive. Yep. And I, all these events are cool and I like finding you know here's what happens as you start going crazy and here's what happens as you start running out of food but the amount of time it takes to lay the groundwork for a, a, a moderately successful run to see that stuff is so long yep um i think the biggest thing for me right now is i mean i'm not doing too bad on the run i'm currently on I think the biggest thing I've I've taken away from the start of this is don't fight anybody. It's yeah. just not worth it right now. Yeah. I have one gun and it usually takes me two or three fuel to do the maneuvering necessary to actually fight somebody. It's a kill and like a bat. It's just not worth it. Yeah, turn off so, your light and just sneak away. Mm-hmm. Turn off your light, hit the triangle button, get that little boost going and just go <laughs> Right. Hope you don't go crazy in the meantime. Yeah. I, I mean, I, genuinely, there's so much I like about this game. I'm gonna have to do, put a little bit more time into it and try and figure out if, if this is one of those games where there is an optimal path for me to actually make progress or, mm. or what. Because I'm genuinely enjoying playing the game right now. It's just so slow. Yeah, the the, I feel like for you and I, the time investment is really tough. You, you know to pull back we're playing stuff for tvgp and for game club and for we rogue like it so and game of the year is coming up soon so there's <laughs> right. a whole bunch of stuff we're trying to finish right so for a game it, it's certainly not sunless sea's fault that it is a a deliberate experience but that's not long runs are not the thing we can suffer right now <laughs> There's a reason I haven't played Dead Cells for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why I haven't played Dead Cells lately. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I, I feel like I want to. Once we're done, I want to look at some beginners' guides and see if there's anything really obvious I'm missing that maybe the tutorial didn't teach me. I don't want to look for like, here's how to get fifty bajillion dollars in twenty seconds. Like that, I, I'm not really interested yeah. in that. Um, you know, I don't want to have. A super huge ship that has 20 guns on it because that that doesn't seem like the way you want to go i just want to have a whole bunch of um fuel and supplies it's like i went i did the father's bones quest on one of my um people and said oh just sail all the way down to the southern southeastern corner of the map and i was like cool i will just beeline it straight for there i had a bunch of fuel, food and fuel and uh there was a there was a ship there it was like a glorious glowing ship that had 50 crew on it. It was like, mm -hmm. nope. Bright golden, dead yep. shiny. I was like, nope, nope. I'm not even I'm not even going to attempt going close to it. I know they will kill me in one shot. Yep. And that, usually a good indicator I've noticed there is the higher the, the health bar number, mm -hmm. the higher damage they put out. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I've killed a couple of people just by sneaking up behind them, getting in the blind spot and just putting bullets into them while they try and turn to the point where they can hit me and I'm right. just like no I'm literally in your blind spot and there's nothing you can do Smart. I will just stay here and maneuver <laughs> with you right to make sure I stay there yeah yeah I 
I think for me, I wrote a whole bunch of, I wrote a whole bunch of notes here that I think at the end don't matter too much. Uh, one thing I guess we didn't talk about is carrying stuff over from run to run. Um, I think that's a cool so, idea. It is, but right now it feels like I I can't do it yet because yeah. it has these certain things that you need to fulfill before you can actually do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what those things are. Yeah, like I I like that. The for me the one of the easiest one of the best things I've done is just hey let's carry over the map. You know, mm -hmm. like, I know. I have I know I bring the correspondence. That's all I've done. Yeah, like I did one where it is carry over some money because I ended one run with a lot of money, and that was helpful. But you know, I I think as we unlock more stuff, you know, fingers crossed that'll that'll work out well. But I, it's hard because I I think to wrap up for me, I I want to really like it, and I am really liking parts of it but i i really feel lost in a way that i usually don't when you start roguelike because most of them have such a small scope that yeah that expands over time that having such a huge scope to begin with with the limited knowledge it feels rough not bad yeah. but just it's a rough beginning yeah it's like uh, hand of fate does a really good one where it starts you and it's like two floors then it's yeah. two floors again then it's three then it's four then it's five isaac starts you with three floors to get to beat the game at yep. the beginning before you know what you're doing 12 but you know right <laughs> this is just like here's the world go yeah like you just explore however much you want like if you do something wrong you're gonna get punished for it and it, which is fun but mm-hmm I have been killed by a tentacle, a shark, insanity, um, fuel, hunger. A, sh uh, a shark with straps on it, which was weird. Yeah, I didn't. I ran into that once, and I didn't get killed. I think I left it alone because it's like, look, if, so if someone put this shark in a straight jacket, I, I am not going to mess with it. <laughs> yeah, R three is toot your horn as well, by the way. Yes, I I like, I like toot. <laughs> yeah, it's real good. Uh, all right. Any uh, last thoughts here before we scoot? Uh, no, that's pretty much it for me. It's at this point for me, it's mostly a case of hmm. I still don't know how I feel. Yeah, it's just diving more into it and seeing seeing if it eventually, if we can figure out how to start a run. Uh, I feel yes, like it's probably the most important thing. So, yeah, definitely. But we will see next week. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.